Welcome back to the channel everybody. Guess what? We've got another tent. And as I'm sure you can see, this one will not be for backpacking. So it actually came from a company called Alvantor that reached out to me and said would I like to, to try this. And you know what? As something a bit more novel, I thought I'll give it a go. Partly, this thing pops up. You get the thing out. Oh, there we go. Quite a beast. Right, obviously not for backpacking. Don't ask me what weight it is. Whoa. I'd say 15, 20 kilos probably. <laughs> it looks like it's got some fairly chunky straps holding it together and stopping it springing out. So we also seem to have what feels like a bag of pegs and another pole of some sort, although I didn't think it needed poles. So we seem to have a kind of set of fiberglass poles here, or possibly just the one that's all joined together with big chunky plastic end pieces, metal joints. And on opening this bag, I've got, all right, sandbags for extra stability. Well, that's quite good. So I guess you can tie the whole thing down. And what else have we got? Oh, some fairly hefty duty shepherd's hook style pegs. I think they're steel rather than aluminium. So your one year guarantee. Thanks for purchasing California. Okay. Okay, I have an admission to make. This is not your normal backpacking tent. This is more about shelters for different reasons and gardens for commercial use and for sports use. But I was kind of intrigued and I thought, you know what, I'd love one for the back garden. So reading this label, this is more of an explosive device than a tent. Right, this is making me extremely nervous. It's a bit like popping a champagne bottle or something. I'm quite nervous about opening this up. Anyway, you'll get a laugh if nothing else. Oh, nothing happened. <laughs> whoa, whoa. <laughs> well, that wasn't scary at all. No. How does that work? Oh, yeah, that's good. Whoa. Louise. I can't get out. <laughs> oh, I can. Wow, it's actually quite a size. I think this is the 10 foot by 10 foot. They do ones that are even bigger. I think they, <laughs> I think they go up to about 30 by 30, which must be an absolute beast. Anyway, it is a few hours before Storm Aiden is due. So I possibly have mistimed this very, very badly. So here we go. Inside. I think these, this is another door on this side, so it must roll up, tie off to there. Clear roof. Uh, I need to check and see if there's a fabric canopy is meant to go over the top of it. Fairly chunky PVC fabric. Uh, they did say it'll be wrinkled when you first open it, but it gradually loses its wrinkles, or you can use a very um, a hair dryer on it with just a light heat. Plenty of height, as you can see. I'm five foot eight, so plenty of room to stand for six foot plus people. Yeah, quite a wacky wee thing. Quite like the idea we put our furniture inside it and we can have a little social in it. But I'm actually thinking about trying to sleep in it for that open air experience. Should be a bit mad, but it could be worth trying. Right, I've got to get these guy lines in place. So everything, as you can imagine, is really substantial. Huge eyelets and anchoring points and guy lines that are really thick. Not surprising. I would not want this one to escape in a storm. Quite sensibly, you've got a guy lower down about a foot off the ground, foot and a half. And you have a second guy line here, which will attach to the same pegs because it doesn't look like there's that many pegs. Okay, we are double guyed all round. Um, probably about as solid as I get it without using the sandbags, but it says I've not got any sand. I'm not going to bother with that at the moment. We'll give this a wee run through Storm Aiden as it stands, excuse the pun, and uh, see how we get on. I'm going to go in and just check and see what the other pole is for. I cannot for the life of me understand what it's meant to be used for. So I've assembled, it's three poles in total and I have no idea what they actually do. Nothing in the instructions. I'll go out and have a look at the tent and see if I can make more sense of it. And you also get a patch repair kit to fix the vinyl. 
But to be fair to them, that vinyl is so chunky, I'd be kind of surprised if you managed to damage it. I'm not actually sure, other than burning it, how you would actually puncture it. It also has two roof vent zips which are separate. So on either side here, you can close this up for ventilation. Same on the other side. Probably be quite cosy. It almost would make a good hot tent. Do you think I could put a stove jack up there and put the flue straight up the middle? I just checked Alvanto's website and they've got instruction videos. I've now found out what these poles are. They go into these pockets and across the roof to support it. And I think give it a bit more rigidity. So there you go, two second job to be honest, very easy. It just pops straight into these webbing pockets here on either side and it's done. I had another look at the video as well to find out how the sandbags work. So they basically just hang over the hooks internally at the base and then you just fill them full of weights. I've actually got some logs, so I might just pop some logs in to give it a wee bit of extra stability. Pop them in there, and there you go. I'm actually kind of genuinely surprised by this. I actually think it's quite cool in its own way. And it's actually quite nicely made. It's designed in California, I presume made in China, Vietnam. I'll check, I'll put it on screen if I can find out for you. But yeah, it's actually a lot better than for whatever reason I expected. So actually, I've really quite enjoyed using this Avantor bubble tent. It's actually really good. I think it retails for about $399 in this size. We've used it for dining, we've used it for drinking. I might well try a wee potential camp in it as well. But anyway, I just thought I'd show you around it, see what you think. $399, um, which is not bad. I would say this is a 10 by 10. You can get up to 30 by 30, I think, and you can get smaller ones. So whether you wanted to use it as a garden shelter for dining or drinking, uh, a jacuzzi cover, I've seen it being used for that. A greenhouse, which would work really well actually when the sun's out it gets really warm, but at least you can use the vents. So thanks again for watching everybody. If you liked the video, please give me a wee like. And if you've never subscribed before, this is a bit unusual, not unusual for you. But if you'd like to subscribe, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you out there for the next one. Cheers just now.